Okay, before we proceed, I would like to make a few uh, comments on the density of states. The first one is that almost every quantity that experimentalists measure depend on the density of states. And for that reason, it's obviously very, very important. So we have seen already example in the uh, previous part of the course when we have calculated the heat capacity due to phonons. So the uh, density of states was already there. Uh, second comment is on calculations of the density of states. So in free electron model, uh, these calculations are quite simple and straightforward. But this is only because our problem is spherically symmetric. In any realistic system, calculations of the density of states are far more complicated. And the last comment is on uh, notations. So as you see, the expression for the density of states as we derive it is uh, proportional to the volume. So quite often in the textbooks and also in almost all research papers, when someone is talking about density of states, they usually mean density of states normalized per volume. So it's a density of states per unit energy per unit volume. Okay, so with all these remarks made, we can now move to our next subject, which is the Fermi energy. So until now, we were talking about states, but we haven't mentioned if these states are occupied or empty. So now let's consider what will happen if we actually have a finite number of electrons in our system. Uh, so also let's consider a situation when temperature is equal to absolute zero. So this is when T is equal to zero. So when we put our first electron into the system, then it will obviously go to the state with the lowest energy, and the state is close to the origin in K space. So when K is equal to zero. As we add more and more electrons, so these electrons also would like to go to the state with the lowest possible energy, but this state is already occupied. So Pauli principle tells us that it's not possible and they have to go to states with a higher energy. And for that reason, if we have large number of electrons, they will occupy a sphere in the K space. So the surface of the sphere, which separates occupied states from the empty states is called the Fermi surface and the energy which corresponds to the energy of electrons on the Fermi surface is called the Fermi energy. So the equations that we have derived so far allow us to calculate Fermi energy quite simply. So if we just scroll up a little bit, we will find expression which we need, this one. So this gives us the number of states below certain energy n. So now if we replace this n with number of electrons, then the energy become the Fermi energy. So I will just try to copy this expression. success. So all I have to do now is to replace number of states with number of electrons. And in this case, my energy become a Fermi energy. OK. 
Okay, now I can rearrange terms to express Fermi energy through the number of electrons. Um, to do that, I can write it as 3 pi squared h cube m divided by l cube is equal to uh, 2 m Fermi energy to the power 3 half. Okay, now I take uh, both parts of this equation to the power two third. Um, this will give me uh, following, so three pi squared and divided by L cube to the power two third. So H cube to the power two third will simply be H squared. And this will be to M E Fermi. And this may, brings me to my final expression. So the Fermi energy is H bar squared divided by 2 M uh, times 3 pi squared. And instead of N divided by L cubed, which is the total number of electrons divided by the volume of my crystal, I will write the uh, concentration of electrons because that's what it is. So the concentration of electrons, number of electrons per unit volume to the power two third. So M is the concentration or the density of electrons. density of electrons. Okay, now let's recall how energy is related to the uh, K vector. So energy is H bar squared K squared divided by 2M. So now I can introduce also the uh, Fermi wave vector. So if I put in this expression F uh, e, uh, e to be E Fermi, then K become K Fermi. If I compare last two expressions, then I will see immediately this K Fermi squared is my expression in uh, brackets to the power two third. So the Fermi wave vector will be simply the same expression, but to the power one third. So let's write it down. K okay, Fermi is uh, 3 pi squared m to the power one third. And I think this expression is simple enough to remember. So it's simpler than expressions for the uh, Fermi energy. But if you remember this one, you can always recover the expression for the Fermi energy if you remember how Fermi energy is related to the uh, Fermi wave vector, which is uh, sort of quite simple because it's uh, uh, very much related to the uh, energy of uh, free particles. So it's just the momentum squared divided by twice of the mass. Okay, so in analogy with the K uh, Fermi wave vector, we can also introduce the Fermi momentum. Which is nothing else but H K Fermi. And then we can introduce also the uh, Fermi velocity which is a parameter that we will use quite often. So the Fermi velocity is simply the Fermi momentum divided by the mass. And last but not least, we can also introduce a Fermi temperature, which is defined as in the following way. So the uh, product of Boltzmann constant 
second Fermi temperature is the Fermi energy. <clears throat> right, so the example example in front of you on a slide on the left uh, left top corner top left corner uh, gives you um, a feeling for the um, values of Fermi energy Fermi wave vector and Fermi temperature so in this case we consider uh, potassium which is a monoatomic uh, material monoatomic metal with the uh, density of atoms 1.4 10 to the power 28 per cubic meter uh, which is the same as the uh, number of electrons so please note that the uh, fermi wave vector depends only on single parameter which is the density of electrons <clears throat> So then by just uh, substituting the um, value of m into expression for the uh, Fermi wave vector, we can see that the Fermi wave vector is roughly uh, 1 inverse angstrom. So angstrom is 10 to the uh, minus 10 meter. And this roughly corresponds to the inverse uh, interatomic distance. So the uh, Fermi energy is of the order of a uh, few electron volts uh, which also corresponds to roughly a few units of 10 to the minus 19 uh, joules and then if we uh, substitute uh, this value of energy into the last expression to calculate the uh, fermi temperature then we can find that a Fermi temperature for all metals is very high. It's of the order of 20,000 Kelvin. So it's larger, significantly larger than the melting temperature for all materials. And that means that we can always safely assume that any practical temperature is much lower than the Fermi temperature. So in this case, uh, the electronic system is called highly degenerate. Right, so last bit of uh, derivation for today is about uh, using the expressions that we have just derived to calculate density of states in a somewhat simpler form. Um, and that will give us the following. So we have derived initially that the density of states is proportional in three-dimensional case to the uh, energy uh, to the power one half, so root square of energy. So now uh, we can uh, write that it's not just proportional to the energy but we can also write the coefficient so now we express density of states through the number of atoms and the Fermi energy. And if we uh, make energy equal to Fermi energy, then in this case, the density of states at the Fermi energy is simply three half of the total number of atoms divided by Fermi energy. Okay, this is uh, all about Fermi energy and see you in the next video.